So what did Tesla do before electric cars? Or is that all that they built or focused on? First of all, are you saying Tesla with a Z? No, no Tesla. Tesla. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You're, you're not from Canada no. or anything? Okay, okay. <laughs> I, um, I, uh, I was thinking about this when I was in the garage. Mm -hmm. You hear me talking about uh, electric cars a lot. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on electric cars? Uh, so I actually haven't given that much thought on it. Um, you know, I hear, uh, people talking about it. I hear some reviews. Um, and, and I think, I don't think much about it because I'm not really in the market in it. Um, and I think that's usually what I base my decision on. Cause you just bought your car like, um, a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. But my car is not newer. Sure. Know? Sure. Either uh, is mine. Yeah. Um, but so I, I think that's why. I haven't really been paying too much attention on it. Um, and even if I was in the market for a newer vehicle, um, I don't know if I would be in that price but what, range What are your for, just uh, thoughts off the top of your head? Like, um, do oh, you feel like, like like electric cars are the future or you feel like, um, you know, they're just uh, a fad or, or, or what? Um, no, I feel like it's, it's the future. You know, I feel like uh, with a lot of talks, uh, you know, uh, recently, um, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, like controlling our climate and, you know, our, our planet's future. So I definitely feel like that's a big step. So that, you do believe in, in, in climate change then? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Um, like, like you, I mean, it's pretty obvious that some type of climate change is happening, but when I say climate change, I mean like that we're human beings are responsible for Oh it. yeah. Yeah. You know what? And, and. And uh, I've, I've always uh, believed in one thing, that, uh, that the plants that you see that let off these huge emissions, and you can kind of see for miles, that those do have an effect. Um, I know that there's people who may not put a second thought into those, you know, and, and, and they see those power plants or whatever factory it is. Sure, sure. You know, and they just, you know, don't blink an eye at it, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, I, I absolutely believe that, you know, those are kind of detrimental to our atmosphere and but, have some effect. What's, you know, some type of effect. But now those are kind of easier to see, um, you know, from far away, you see a big chimney, you see a bunch of like smoke coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, driving by on the highway, you can definitely tell that something's going in the air, but I feel like the difference is, is that how many of those plants are there compared to how many cars are out there? Mm -hmm. Um, there's got to be what a thousand times more cars, maybe a hundred thousand yeah. times yeah. more cars. Yeah, easily. Um, and so, I feel like those do add up. And mm -hmm. and I, I, I guess I was on the bandwagon uh, back in the day of looking at what you used to look at as an electric car, like before Tesla came along, mm -hmm. and they were, um, they weren't good. Um, they, uh, they, they, they definitely sucked. And, and I think the deal with that is, is, you know, a lot of these big car manufacturers, they, um, want to sell cars in all these different countries. And some of these countries have, uh, you know, pretty hardcore laws, um, in looking to clean up the environment. And I believe that they maybe had pushed some of these car companies mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe that's what, what it's called is a, a compliance car. So, you know, if like, let's say, um, car company XYZ wanted to sell in country ABC, uh, they would be like, well, you got to have a clean car. So they would build an electric car um, that would maybe only go 30 to 60 miles. Also would cost like twice as much as a gas car and maybe was like a small little hatchback mm -hmm. and wasn't very yeah. performance driven <clears throat> and nobody bought them. But I, I kind of feel like the car companies were doing that on purpose because they didn't really care. They just wanted to get into that country and build sell cars. And to be in that country, they had to comply with their laws. And so they would go, look, no, we sell electric cars. Um, but they weren't, they weren't very desirable. And I think the, the company that kind of changed things was um, Tesla coming along going, look, you can have a fast car, and it doesn't look like a little crappy hatchback. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and, uh, you know, it can have some interesting things. So what did Tesla do before electric cars? Or is that all that they 
built or focused on. First of all, are you saying Tesla with a Z? No, no Tesla. Tesla. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You're not, you're not from Canada no. or anything. Okay, okay. <laughs> maybe, um, maybe that's my alcohol kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I've had a few yeah. also. So, um, uh, wait. What did they do? Is was yeah, your question? So, so, have they always been in the business of electric cars? Yeah. So, uh, Tesla actually started out. Um, I mean, is that a, is that a uh, a Nikola Tesla Tesla uh, relation there? It. I, I believe that. Yes, yeah, so the company was named after Nikola Tesla, yeah. the the great inventor. Yeah. Um, but um, originally, I believe the. See, it all depends on how you look at it. There, there were these two guys that decided to try to make an electric car, mm-hmm. and they had a company called. Um, uh, I believe it was called like AC Propulsion or mm-hmm. AC something. Um, but then uh, Elon came along and was like, I think we can turn this into something. And his entire, at least from what I've seen in the media, is that his entire idea was first we'll make uh, like a one-off car that is expensive, but we'll prove a couple things. We'll prove, one, that electric cars don't have to look like these little tiny economy, mm-hmm. almost like glorified yeah, go-karts. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it'll be expensive, but we'll, we'll make it, We'll, we'll, we'll basically make a sports car for rich people. Mm-hmm. And so the first car they came out with was um, the Tesla Roadster. And uh, they paired with a couple other car uh, manufacturers like um, Lotus made the body. And um, they bought some off the shelf things to, to, to get this to actually work. And, and they made that car, but I think they only sold thousands of them. Um, I'm I'm not even sure. I can look it up online, but mm-hmm. I think the original Tesla Roadster even sold like less than ten thousand or something. Okay. And they were basically made by hand. Yeah. But th- that was just to prove a, a fact that electric cars don't have to be slow. That they can have decent range, um, and they can look cool. I mean, uh, are you familiar with the uh, Lotus Elise? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's roughly based off the Lotus Elise. Okay. Um, so it's a little two seater convertible. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first production car that they made was. Um, the Model S, and um, that was the first time, and it was in 2012, and the, the car was a four-door car. Um, it had like 240 miles, mm. um, did like nice. zero to 60 in like four seconds. Okay. So, I mean, it wasn't the fastest thing ever, mm. but for a four-door car, it really yeah. moved. Mm-hmm. Now, some of their cars okay. are, um, you know, like the new Model S, um, you know, what, 10 years later, since it's 2000, well, I guess it's 11 years later now, it's 2023. <laughs> um, it, uh, they go uh, basically 400 miles, so almost, not quite double, but almost double the range. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a little bit more expensive than they were originally, but uh, their zero to 60 times are like 1.99 seconds. Dang. Like we're kind of getting into the territory of how much more can the tires take? Yeah, yeah. You know, like... <laughs> Like you can go to a racing slick, but that's not road legal. Yeah, you can't drive that on mm-hmm. the road. Um, but I don't know. I find the whole thing very fascinating. Uh, electric cars, past like uh, like I like fast cars. My yeah. my car's kind of fast. I like mm-hmm. that. Um, and I and I feel like really, if I want a real fast car, mm-hmm. I feel like I I should go electric. Yeah. Plus, the nerd inside of me thinks, you know, it's it's the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but. What I find weird is like when I talk to people about it and, you know, for some weird reason, this whole thing has been uh, politicized, yeah, you know, it, like, like it, yeah. why, what, really has. why does it have to do with like if you're a Republican or a Democrat or yeah. whatever? I, I, I have no idea. I, I hear like these ultra conservatives take shots at like electric cars. Um, I think it was, uh, wasn't it um, Marjorie Taylor Greene that was saying that, um that Pete Buttigieg was just pushing electric cars because mm. he wants to emasculate the entire country. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what's uh, what's so emasculating about having a car that goes zero to 60 in mm. under two seconds? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's basically like <laughs> yeah. having a road legal race car. Mm-hmm. But um, beyond that, I just find like weird things. Like I talk to people and they, and they start saying, um, oh, I can't have an electric car because of X, Y, Z. And well, I think that's not a real thing. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people right now are just stuck on, uh, you know, making that change. Mm-hmm. So let me give you just a quick example. So sure. So uh, I still have a gas on mower. Uh, sure. And uh, I also have a, uh, a, a electric yeah uh, mower. 
And, uh, you know, I, I can't drive myself to get rid of that gas mower just yet. But now, like, like if you're using your electric mower Mm -hmm. or gas mower, I should say, whichever one you're using, Mm -hmm. do you feel like, do you feel like some of this public slide against electric things as if it doesn't make you like the man's man kind of thing? Well, like, uh, do you feel like your neighbors are going to look at you and go, what's up with that guy? Well, well, uh. I guess a little bit, but that's not the, the main reason for me. Like, I do sure. think that, so that's probably on the list, maybe like a number five or so. But Okay. Like but, like uh, 10% of you is like, uh. I don't know, maybe not even 10%, but okay. Maybe, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I think it's also, you know, a, a, a personal change where you have to realize that it's not a step down in your, you know, masculine I mean, or, does or, it, or, does it, or does something. Does it cut the same? Does it do a good a job? Uh, you know what's funny? <laughs> it's that it does a better the the It does uh, a better job. The, uh, the ga- the electric mower does way better than the gas. Are you serious? But, but maybe because it's newer, <laughs> it might have a newer blade. I didn't look into all that, but okay. you know, but maybe yeah. she's need to get a ba- blade sharpened. Yeah, yeah, so right. I probably put, have to put them on an equal playing field, you know. Okay. Uh but yeah, but uh I noticed <clears> that uh this past fall uh <clears throat> when uh I was uh, working on the leaves, uh, mm-hmm. so uh, you know me and my fiance, we have a pretty a pretty good size area, and I was using the gas mower. She was using the electric, and uh, hers was doing way better than <laughs> mine. And uh, I kept looking over there, like, "Are you? What are you doing? Are you going over it twice?" <laughs> but it's and, and and I just I just yeah. love like like I have so many like yard tools and uh, recreational vehicles. Yeah. I'm real tired of like. Buying oil and oil yeah. filters and yeah. air filters. And like uh, it was like a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. uh, I had to get the snowblower ready for the year. So I had to change the oil mm-hmm. and I had to adjust um, uh, some things on it. And then I also had to like change out the air filter. And then I just kind of do a once over in case there's mm-hmm. a blizzard that comes through and I need yeah. to get out. And um, I was out there for like an hour working on that. And I just yeah. thought, this is so annoying. Yeah. Like the new ones, you just snap the battery off the wall charger and you slide it in and mm-hmm. there you go i mean yeah. you know uh probably check the tires and stuff too but i mean that doesn't take very long yeah uh we have a we have an electric snowblower also. yeah i know so, i'm so, <laughs> so i'm so yeah. jealous of yeah, that yeah. thing <laughs> my, my problem is, is i'm like uh i'm one of those cheap guys where like there's nothing wrong with my snowblower mm-hmm. so i don't want to i want to get a new one but yeah. i don't i don't want to throw this one away for no yeah. reason at all yeah yeah. I don't know. Maybe I should just Facebook th- marketplace you know, I, I th- it. I think that's my thing with the with the mower. I think that's because the gas mower works like it's still a little workhorse. Sure, but you already own the other one. Yeah, but the thing is, I I probably need to. Like, uh, I know it's very rare that both of us are home to like cut the grass mm-hmm. at the same time. But when we're there, it gets done quickly. Otherwise, it's almost like a two day job with the, you know. Yeah, so, you guys do have a, de- a decent sized lawn. Yeah. So like somebody would take the front yard, somebody take the yeah. backyard. Yeah. But so, now, um, back to uh, we, we well, sidebarred yeah, yeah, here yeah. for a little bit, but uh, <laughs> but you know that, that, that's actually kind of the thing. Like, I remember back when I was younger, my dad had some um, uh, like cordless power tools, and this was back in the day of like NICAD batteries mm-hmm. before we had lithium ion and things yeah. like that. And the batteries would die all the time; they wouldn't hold a charge very well. the The tools weren't very powerful, but I own a whole garage full of um, lithium ion tools, mm. and those things are, uh, a lot of cases, just as good as the plugins. Yeah, yeah. And and th- some of the batteries I have are like eight years old; they still work just fine. Mm-hmm. But I keep them on the tender. Right. I don't leave them out in the freezing cold. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a little bit of maintenance there, but um, I'm just feeling like battery and motor technology has gotten so good. Yeah. And I hear a lot of these people say things like. Like I'll go, oh, yeah, oh, I want an electric car, and then and then they're like, um, oh, I uh, like one of my neighbors was telling me this. He goes, um, uh, yeah, my uh, he was saying his uh, daughter in law uh, didn't want she wanted an electric car, but she said she couldn't get one because she has two young kids, and I think their kids are like one and two or one and three or something. Mm. And she goes, can you just imagine? I've got two hungry kids in the back seat of my car. And I'm at the charger for 30 minutes, and I've got to explain to them 
why we're not at home and why they're not eating because they are at the charger. And I said, <laughs> under what scenario would that play out? Mm -hmm, yeah. And he's like, well, what do you mean? What if you need to charge it up? And I said, well, um, let's just uh, let, let's just look at this. They have a garage, so they would charge in their garage, and at least the car that I want goes like 350 miles on a mm -hmm. charge. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's say we charge it fully, and I would say that most of the time you're only going to charge it to like 90% to protect the battery's integrity. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I used to live, I used to have this home and another home in Chicago, and the Chicago home is, uh, at least it was, 230 miles away from here. Mm -hmm. It would take about four and a half hours to drive it, depending on traffic. Sometimes less, sometimes more. But if you could go 300 and let's say 50 miles on a charge, that would basically like go, be going from here all the way mm -hmm. to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that going to take? Is that going to take like seven and a half hours? So is this the mm -hmm. scenario? She's out just running errands, mm -hmm. and she's been driving for seven and a half hours, mm -hmm. and she's traveled 350 miles. Mm -hmm. And even if that is the scenario, let, let's say let's she, she did do <laughs> she that. Got, yeah. She's got two little kids in the car. Mm -hmm. She's driven for seven and a half hours. She's gone 350 miles, and now she doesn't have enough power to get home. Yeah. So here's she's got to charge for 30 minutes? Well, here's my question. If you charge for 30 minutes, you'll get 80% charge on the car. Mm -hmm. you charge for 45, you'll get 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but the lower, and, and see, here's like a paradigm shift. Like mm -hmm. electric cars are you have to think a little differently. Like, like they're, they're not just like gas cars. There's, mm -hmm. there's other things you got to know. So like w one of the things that I don't feel like a lot of people know is the lower the charge level is, the faster they charge. Oh, okay. So let's just say she drove for seven and a half hours and she drove for 350 miles and now she's got to get home. Mm -hmm. Now, how far away from home is she? Is she 20 miles away from home? Because that's a five-minute charge. Yeah. So you put five minutes worth of charge in it, which is just as much as mm -hmm. pumping gas. Then you drive home and you plug it back in once you get home. Why would you have to charge it yeah. to full? Yeah. If you're going to go home, then charge it home. Yeah. So I think that uh, that probably comes from a uh, lack of understanding mm -hmm. uh, from the whole system. And then, uh, you know, I think that there's going to still be a lot of pushback because uh, since it is electric and if you're going to charge at your home, then that's, you know, increasing your electric bill. Sure. Um, and and, and I, w I would assume that charging your vehicle would be, I mean, I will equate this to something that I'm familiar with, with like in the wintertime in my little uh, mudroom entryway, mm -hmm. you know, a pretty decent size. I usually put a space heater out there oh, uh, yeah, in sure. the winter, um, you know, and I'll turn it on on the lowest temperature. I don't need it to get to like 80 degrees, mm -hmm. you know, um, but just to kind of warm it up, get to chill out the air. Um, but that raises my electric bill quite a bit. Um, just having that out there kind of like, like, like of, what do you think it raises your electric bill? Maybe so, uh, a dollar a day? Uh, so maybe $30 over the month? Uh, possibly maybe at the low point, something like that. Okay. Um, I mean, I know that that maybe not be, that's probably not a good equivalent because mm -hmm. depending on, you know, how often you're charging and how long you're charging your vehicle at your home. But well, you like, know. okay. So, uh, the car I really want is the, uh, Tesla Model 3 performance. And I believe the battery pack it's got in it is a 82 kilowatt battery pack. Mm -hmm. And one of my neighbors, uh, again, this is just misinformation, stuff in the news, mm -hmm. um, for some reason it's politicized. So you hear all these negative things. And he heard me say, I want an electric car. And he goes, I, I heard those things aren't any cheaper to fuel than a gas car. And I said, well, Where'd you hear that? And he told me, oh, one of his buddies told him that that's the case. And I was like, well, if you use one of those electric chargers, mm -hmm. you know, that's maybe in a grocery parking lot or whatever, um, it can be almost as expensive. And he's like, ah, see? Mm -hmm. So it's not like the savings mm -hmm. they're talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, that's not really true. I'm like, think about it like this. Um, like my car goes about 350 miles on a full tank of gas. Mm -hmm. uh, right now with current gas prices, it costs about $55 to fill it. If I had an electric car that was an equivalent of that, like the car that I want, to charge it on a charger that's in some parking lot or wherever, out by the, um, out by a grocery store or whatever, 
um, that could run in the neighborhood of about $40. Mm-hmm. So 55 compared to 40 it's a little cheaper, but mm-hmm. it's not the savings that everyone's talking about. Right. But now here's where the savings that everyone's talking about comes into play. After we had that conversation, I looked up on my electric bill to find out how much I'm paying for electricity. And I pay uh, 10.8 cents a kilowatt. So, I mean, what, what's the math on that? Um, I don't have a uh, okay. calculator. In, oh, no, he, he, here's one. Okay. So um, if we do 10.8 times 82... or I should say 0. 0.1008 times 82, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's $8.85. Now, that Is would... Is it $8.80? $8.85, yeah. Okay. Now, that's under the assumption that the transfer of power from your house to your car is perfect mm-hmm. and it has no losses. Mm-hmm. But, but that's that's not actually reality. You're going to have a little bit of losses. You're going to have some loss to when the batteries heat up. Um, little things like that will happen. Mm. So let's say, just for argument's sake, it's it's already, I already said 885 so let's say it's $9, and then let's account for losses. It's called 10 bucks. So $10 to go just as far as my current car goes on $55. Okay. See, so there is a massive savings. Mm. So it is more costly to buy the car um, in some cases, there are some cheaper electric cars out there like the Chevy Bolt and things like that. But um, there's also no oil changes, no mm-hmm. air filters. But, um, what, but what are those uh, repairs going to cost in the long run? So say that, uh, I mean, obviously there's no... Uh, well, there's less you know, moving parts on right. an electric car, so there's right. less things to break. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but you still have things that can break. True. So uh, what are those looking like? I mean, you know, are... are is that something that people are looking into? Because I would say that right now it's probably more expensive just because there's not as many. Mm-hmm. But when it becomes the norm, yeah, I bet you it'll be just as expensive mm-hmm. as car repairs yeah. right now. Okay. Yeah. But at least that's my assumption. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just, you know, throwing things out there. But yeah, sure. I, I mean, I agree because um, I'm sure that we saw the same things with uh, vehicles as they evolved. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, we're, and, we're, we're kind of really at the beginning of these. Yeah. You know? Right. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. And, you know, uh, it's it's really just uh, for a lot of people to get on board is is uh, for one, like you said, you mentioned the politicization of the electric vehicle. So, right, you know, getting past that would be the number one thing, um, and then kind of looking uh, in depth and in, in weighing the pros and cons. Uh, you know, see, to those see what I, I what I find weird is, and and I'm, and I'll fully admit. I'm kind of geeked about it uh, just because I like technology and I like cars and things mm. like that. And, and, and the thought of a new fast car would be, is, is fun to me, but mm. they're by no means perfect. Yeah. They have plenty of problems, but I feel like a lot of people think that an electric car is just like a gas car, except for it runs off electricity. Mm-hmm. And I would actually say that it's not that, there's so many things that are different, like one pedal driving, the fact that your brakes last twice as long. Wait, wait, wait. Um, one pedal driving? What are you talking about? Yeah. So when you slow down with an electric car, um, and most of them do it automatically, and a lot of them have the ability to adjust how much it does this. But instead of just coasting, it basically drags the electric motor, so it turns the electric motor into a generator, and then takes that energy and puts it back into the battery. But the effect of that is it feels like somebody's lightly had their foot on the brake. Mm. So you slow down a lot faster. So you you use your brakes a lot mm. less, so your brake pads okay. last a okay. lot longer. Okay. Okay. So they call it one-pedal driving because if your foot isn't oh, uh, partway yeah. down, as soon as you let off, you'll slow mm. down. Oh, okay. Um, but I, uh, <laughs> I, I I just hear these people like say these things that are problems. And, and like I said, you know, they're not – electric cars are not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um They've got plenty of problems, but gas cars have plenty of problems. Yeah, true. Yeah. But I don't feel like anyone is actually pointing out the real problems with electric cars. They're saying weird things like, oh, well, I heard uh, an electric car is actually dirtier to drive than a gas car. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah. okay, right. 
depends it, on what you do to it. <laughs> well, it depends also on like how long you drive it and and how long you've had it for and and what we're talking to what we consider the life of the car is. Yeah. I mean, if, if you buy a gas car and you buy an electric car and you drive each one of them for one mile, to manufacture the electric car and to manufacture the gas car, if you take in all the emissions from the factories and everything like that in the manufacturing process, the electric car is dirtier yeah. after one mile. Mm. But uh, like, like one of the most dirty parts of an electric car is like to build the battery, which mm. takes about 7,000 kilowatts. Mm-hmm. So depending on how you get your electricity and what type of electricity is, if it's green or if it's dirty, uh, it all depends on how long you've got to drive it before you clean up yeah. the emissions of constructing it. Okay, so actually, so uh, I don't mean to, to cut you off. And no, 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 I'm so sorry. Quickly. I was talking a lot. No, no, you're good. But so, okay, so here's the, the biggest thing. Uh, like, I am not a fast driver. Uh, I don't really get that enjoyment. Anymore. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah. You normally just go the speed yeah, limit. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't judge me on that. Like whatever. It's no, it's, it's fine. speed limit for a reason. You're not supposed to be doing zero to sixty in one second. You know, because that's yeah. you know, whatever. That's <laughs> and we'll, we'll get into all that. But so, what is the benefit uh, for someone like me? Like I don't, you know, I'm, like I'm not going to be taking advantage of that. I'm just going to be taking my time. Well, so, yeah, I would look at it like. Number one, there's going to be less maintenance. Uh, there's no oil changes. There's um, a lot less, like, uh, there's no, like, tune-ups or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there are maintenance periods where they want to come in and check the engine and, mm-hmm. or I should say motors. Mm-hmm. And um, there's also, uh, there is a radiator because the battery oh, packs right. and the motors need to be cooled. Mm-hmm. So um, I believe that that needs to be flushed at some point. But I believe that's... And the same kind of level of flushing the radiator in your current car. Mm-hmm. Um, the brakes need to be replaced less. And um, to be honest, if you're just using it as like a daily driver to go to work and to go to the grocery store and things like that, um, as long as you're not going on car trips, you should never have to go to the gas station. Mm-hmm. So like in my head, I'm thinking, one, a lot less maintenance. And two, every time I walk out of the car, it's like having a full tank of gas. Yeah. Um, but you're going to pay more for it up front, um, but you should pay less for it in the long run. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I think a lot of it's a wash, but some of it's a convenience factor of, like there's plenty of times I jump in my car and I got to go do some things and I'm like, oh, I got to hit the gas station first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that'll never happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, there's pluses and minuses. Yeah. Like, like a big minus is... Um, you know, a couple people have come out with electric trucks mm-hmm. and they get great gas miles. They have great acceleration. They do yeah. a lot of great things. And then they go to tow a 10,000 pound oh, trailer okay. and they find out the car only goes half the distance. Yeah. And it's like, well, you're dragging 10,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You'd use more gas, mm-hmm. but you probably notice it less. Right. Because you didn't have to pull over for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But then again, if you're just going from your house mm-hmm. to the lake that's 10 miles away, you probably right. never know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's an interesting thing about too, because that brings you into like, I mean, if we're going to go all electric, mm-hmm. you know, what is that going to do for like semi trucks? Right. You know, uh, things like that, which I know that's me down the line. Uh, Actually, Tesla just came out with their um, Tesla semi truck. Oh, really? Yeah. They've been talking about it since mm-hmm. 2016 and they delivered, I believe the first five or eight. Oh, uh, Pepsi got a couple <laughs> and a couple other big um, companies did. Uh, I'm kind of waiting to, to hear what these companies have to say after okay. a year. That'd you know, be interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're supposed to go 500 miles oh, wow. on a charge. Okay, okay. but they yeah. require a special charger, yeah. and they yeah, have yeah. a massive battery right, pack, right, and yeah. they are very heavy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure that w- yeah has a big effect. Sure, but yeah. a lot. You know, <laughs> they were coming at it from the standpoint of a lot of these semi trucks are just used for. Um, like regional trips, mm-hmm. like uh, some company will have a regional distribution center and they only have to drive 50 to 100 miles to their clients. So they mm-hmm. go to the grocery stores and they go to the stores mm-hmm. and they drop their stuff off. So going 500 miles isn't that big a deal, you know? Yeah. Okay. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, it's, so it's, a, it's like the new Amazon delivery truck. Yeah, yeah. I think it only goes like 130 miles, but mm-hmm. most of their delivery routes are mm-hmm. like yeah. 80 miles. So, mm-hmm. yeah, nice. Uh, and then, and then, uh, so I don't know if you know, but what are we looking at for like, uh, like uh, off-road vehicles? So like four wheelers and you know ATVs and things like that. Are they uh, 
also going to go electric. Oh, you mean more recreational yeah, ones? Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to say trucks there for a second because mm-hmm. uh, Ford's fastest truck was the uh, uh, Ford F-150 Raptor. Yeah, yeah, I did which, see that. Which, yeah, you know, it used to have the big V8, but now it has like a supercharged V6. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got aftermarket shocks and stuff on it. Well, I shouldn't say aftermarket because they put mm-hmm. them on in the factory, but they they're like Fox shocks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And people jump them and all kinds of stuff. Um, but now the fastest uh, Ford F-150 is the Ford F-150 Lightning, mm. which is their electric truck. Um, and they said that all of their stuff is going electric. And somebody directly asked them in one of these news conferences and said, um, you know, your old truck, the the old fastest truck was the Raptor, and now mm. it's the Lightning. Are you going to make an electric version of the Raptor? And they said, yes. <laughs> So we don't have it yet, mm. but I am really interested in that. Something with just insane acceleration, mm-hmm. but also has like massive shocks on it. Yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah. The The Tesla Cybertruck also isn't out yet, um, but they were talking about all kinds of clearance and stuff like that and off-roading it. And uh, I can't wait to see that out. And um, I want to see, um, you know... Uh, if it can do all these things, if people are going to break it easily or whatever, yeah, you know, if yeah. it can stand up. Yeah. But, but as far as like, um, four wheelers and stuff, uh, there's really not a lot out there. There's a little bit, and there's a little bit of like side by sides. And there's mm-hmm. also people doing stuff in their garage. Yeah. Um, there's a, a ton of electric motorcycles out there. Um, I've actually looked at a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I think the electric motorcycle is pretty good. Okay. Um, but uh, I haven't seen any, like, four-wheelers or anything that oh, looked okay. awesome. Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, you said, you know, it's it's a newer thing, so I'm sure that's probably coming. Yeah, I feel like we're at the beginning, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like like when we move from horse and buggy to, like, yeah, yeah. automobile. <laughs> yeah. Now we're moving from gas to electric, and yeah. it's just... Yeah. Yeah, it takes a while. It's a big transition, so... Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the thing I, I always think about is, like, you know, if Tesla first started their... Um, uh, Production cars, I should say, started making product or cars like in, on an assembly line mm-hmm. in 2012, and it went 240 miles. And that same car now goes 400 miles. Um, what is it going to look like in 10 years? You know, maybe yeah. it won't be such a linear thing. Maybe it'll die off a little bit. Maybe it won't go twice as far again. But what happens if it goes 700 miles? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's huge. I've never owned a car yeah, where yeah. you fill up the gas tank and it goes 700 miles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I just, I just think it's, uh, it's weird that like all the people's problems aren't, um, aren't the, uh, the things I deem as real problems. Uh, have you heard any of that, like in the news, or friends saying, "Oh, I wouldn't do that because of X, Y, Z"? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I've heard, I haven't heard uh, many friends talking about kind of, uh, you know, downplaying uh, electric vehicles, but you hear it a lot in the news. Sure. Um, you know, people just wanting to push back on it. Um, you know, and it's and it's weird because, like you said, you know, their reasons aren't, uh, you know, that solid. You know, there's no legitimate danger, uh, you know, that they seem to kind of spew about electric vehicles. So it, yeah. it, it forces you to kind of do your own research because it just sounds very extreme, you know. Thinking of danger, uh, I remember back when they, um, when the Tesla Model S first came out, and uh, you were seeing a lot more people have and uh, drive electric cars. And then, sure enough, I saw on um, YouTube a uh, a Tesla that had gotten into an accident. And it was on fire on the side of the road. Mm. And just to, like, show how little the public actually knows is all over the news, they were like, how does a car with no gasoline catch on fire? <laughs> and me being a nerd, I'm thinking, you know what lithium does when you expose it to air? Yeah. It bursts into flames. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there are so many videos online of just idiots stabbing their cell phones with like a knife and yeah. then watching it almost explode. Mm-hmm. And uh, nowadays we know it because there's enough of those electric cars out there that we've had enough accidents. And I heard a fireman say, it takes around 10,000 gallons of water to put out a car fire that has a full tank of gas. And it takes around 40,000 gallons of water to put out an electric <laughs> car fire. So, like I said, they're not perfect. Yeah. But I just don't get like. Yeah. 
all these weird things people say about him. It's like, yeah. are you just making this up or yeah, what? Yeah. There'll be a lot of things made up. There'll be a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, extra other things that are exaggerated um, just to kind of make it look bad. Um, I and do, I'm not saying electric cars are for everyone. Yeah. But but I, I hear this like almost like, oh, you must uh, worship Satan if mm. you want one of those. And yeah. I'm like, well, it's fast. It seems fun. Yeah. There was so, a, some of them almost drive themselves. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, a uh, I don't know if you saw, I, I don't know much detail about this case, but uh, where there was a, uh, it looked like it was uh, a car uh, drove off the road and off of a cliff, mm. uh, you know, and it kind of looked like, we, I don't, you know, at first sight, you don't know what happened, maybe. Sure. You know, uh, but come to find out, it was an electric vehicle. It was a Tesla. And um, uh, reports say that maybe the driver tried to, uh, uh, you know, murder. It was like a homicide attempt for the passengers in the vehicle. Um, but but no one but no one no one died in that vehicle. Um, oh, really? Yeah. No it one went died. off the cliff? Yeah, it went off a cliff. And everyone uh, survived? Yeah, everyone survived. Um, and then after they did some research, they found out that, you know, this was a possible, like, it was done on purpose. You know, that's one of the things I will say. Um, I'm not sure what all the other uh, car ratings are, but, uh, you know, Elon Musk has talked a lot about Tesla and about his, um, what, what is it called, the N NTSB, yes. uh, their ratings. And they're always very high. And and I feel like the reason why they're high um, you know, like uh, I think the safest vehicle out there right now is a, is a Tesla is if you just think about like a crash, like either an offset or just a straight on, um, frontal crash, mm -hmm. you know, they build in crumple zones and things like that to protect the, the occupants of the car. But at a certain point with a normal vehicle, like mine, like mine's mm -hmm. a gas car, um, the crumple zone is going to crumple to the full extent. And then you're into the engine. Mm -hmm. And then the engine gets pushed into the bay where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. But now if you have a car that doesn't have anything up front, then you've got all that room to absorb all the energy mm -hmm. and not push anything into the passenger compartment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, that and uh, the other safety thing I, 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 I didn't realize right away until I started watching some of these crash videos is um, you put a huge battery pack underneath the car. Mm -hmm. It really makes the car want to, like, sit up correctly. Mm -hmm. There was a rollover test I saw um, that the government did on the uh, the large SUV that Tesla makes, and uh, they rolled it over into like the sandbox thing, mm -hmm. and it actually rolled over on its side and then flipped back up on its wheels. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, yeah. for a, <laughs> a decent like a midsize SUV. It doesn't want to roll over. Yeah. Like they forced it to roll yeah. over on like this huge skid thing that mm -hmm. slip. I was just like, man, that's that's nuts. Yeah. But it's because all the weight is basically where the axles are. Yeah, yeah, which so is interesting. Yeah, it'll be nice to see where where uh, the rest of this goes in a few years, because you can only imagine that you know technology's going to get better and vehicles are just going to improve. So, right. Yeah. I I, I think I'm just nerding out. Like even like when um. Uh, you know, like one of these supercar manufacturers makes some new supercar and it's like way out of my price range. Yeah. It, it doesn't stop me from going, oh, that would be so fun to yeah. drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you consider yourself uh, a car guy or? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, you know, I look at vehicle specs and, you know, everything else that's important in the vehicle. Um, but I'm not like uh, a more yeah. A to B kind of guy, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What What's the uh, What's the the one car that you've owned that you like the most? Uh, so what's funny is I've only owned uh, four vehicles. Okay. In my life. Well, um, you know, uh, so I mean, I, I've only owned five vehicles in my oh, life. Okay. Okay. If we're like a year apart, so yeah. yeah. Um, but you know what's funny is I would probably say. Uh, my Dodge Journey, even though it's uh, given me a lot of problems. Uh, uh, I have a 2012 right now, and uh, I think that probably a newer version uh, probably doesn't have as many issues uh, as my current vehicle, like the current year. So hopefully all those things have worked out. But there's a lot of pros about the vehicle 
that kind of outweigh the cons. But um, why do you like it? Uh, I don't, you know, it's it's uh, it's an SUV. Um, it's not a uh, it's not real like flashy, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's uh, more useful. I would say. Okay. You know, uh, with a lot of like useful features, and not just because uh, I'm not into like a lot of gadgets and stuff in the car. Sure. Um, you know, so that's why I, I mean I have the vehicle I have now. You know, it, you know it has uh, it doesn't have a, like a giant screen, doesn't have navigation and things like that, but um, it just has what you need to kind of get by. You know, you know some you know some modern right. and current technology in there, but so, so what would you say is the most important feature in a car for you? Um. Probably safety and then maybe gas mileage. Okay. You know? So a car yeah. that's cheap to fuel up and it's got a super high safety rating would yeah. be appealing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the fact that yeah. like, well, I mean, e- even the cheaper electric cars are still like in the 20 some thousand dollar range yeah. or $30,000. Right, right. That's yeah. still probably. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to like buying a, 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 a electric SUV, you know, like if they made sure. a, you know, a Dodge Journey, an electric vehicle, whatever. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Like, I would definitely give it some thought. Um, you know, I don't know if I would have the same pushback as my mower, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I would, I would, I would give, you know, I would give it some thought. Definitely wouldn't be opposed to it, and and say like that's never something I would do. Well, I would say the, the, we're we're at such the beginning. You know, a lot of car manufacturers made a lot of promises. Um, They've said a lot of things. I guess only time will tell. Mm-hmm. But the other problem is, is a lot of them haven't been making electric cars for very long. So the used market is like almost nothing right mm-hmm. now. I mean, really, if you wanted to use electric car, it's like a Chevy Volt or Bolt or um, uh, a Tesla. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, a lot of these other car manufacturers just come out with cars in the last couple of years. So I guess... It'll be really interesting to see what happens in the next uh, five to ten years. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this was a very uh, engaging, good conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely get my eyes, uh, my eyes out for electric vehicles and, and the news and, you know, well, any and, more. And, and I always just feel like anytime anyone says something bad about it, you know, look it up. Yeah, you got to challenge them on it. Well, I feel <laughs> like a lot of these things that I hear that are so negative – Five second Google search proves you wrong. Yeah. Um, but again, they're not perfect. They do have problems. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're looking to tow things, that's not probably a great idea. Um, if you're looking for a cheap car, that's probably not a great idea. Yeah. Um, there had been a couple cars. Uh, Chevy had some problems where um, some of their cars um, caught fire while charging. Mm hmm. Uh, which makes it a little bit of a concern yeah. to have it in your garage mm-hmm. when you're sleeping at night. Yeah. <laughs> um, and even but, though even though some of those are big things, right? You know, that's you know, they're still. It's not. I feel huge. like we're still at the beginning. Like, yeah. like w- what's going to happen in the next ten years? You know. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like we have <clears throat> more issues. Even though we have a larger market of gas vehicles, mm-hmm. you know, we still have issues with gas vehicles. You know, I mean, maybe not. Sure. You know. Uh, maybe you know. Obviously, you don't fuel those up or charge those at your home, but there's still you know you still have a huge range of recalls and safety issues with gas vehicles, and you know no one's putting a comparison on gas vehicles to electric when it comes to that. I feel like from this conversation, I found out the reason why I'm hearing so many negative things is probably just because I talk about it more than you do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought you were going to be like, oh, no, no, I heard these things. I heard that. Mm. Um, but maybe that's just me because I'm bringing it up. Yeah. Um, but it, it gets wild. Like like I had a, I had a friend say, um, well, uh, what happens if you get home and... Uh, the power's there, out. Yeah, there's there's a bad... She goes, what happens if there's a bad blizzard and the power's out and you don't have power for six days mm-hmm. and you need to charge your car mm-hmm. and um, then what are you supposed to do? Yeah. And I was like why would your car be dead? Did you not charge it up before yeah. the storm came? Mm-hmm. She was like, well, what if I didn't? Yeah. And I'm like, what if you drove your electric car, your gas car all the way home and then you ran out of fuel mm-hmm. and then uh, Armageddon came and all the gas engines exploded? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just creating this weirdo yeah. scenario. I mean, mm-hmm. you really think you're going to lose power for six days? I mean, that does happen to people. Right. Yeah. 
But th- then you wouldn't know there was a huge storm coming. Like mm-hmm. we just had a blizzard a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, and gas station and, and like food was empty on the shelves in the grocery stores. Yeah, but I went to the grocery <laughs> store the week before, yeah. and I was like, "Hey, man, I might be in my house for a week." Yeah, I just bought some mm-hmm. food, threw it in the garage or in the in the, yeah, yeah. In the uh, yeah. I'm thinking of cars now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, threw it in the refrigerator, and um, and it was fine. Like you, like mm-hmm. you just don't. I mean, yeah. what happens if you don't plan ahead? Right. And then the worst possible outcome mm-hmm. happens. Then you then you're effed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which which is good. That's a very good, you know, a good comeback because because that's something a lot of people are gonna, you know, they're not gonna make that equivalent, you know, because because they're gonna want to say it's an electric vehicle. Right. You have to do it at your home. So what if this happens? Yeah. But it's the same thing. Like you you still wouldn't be able to get to a gas station if it was a gas vehicle and there's a blizzard and you're snowed in. Right. Well, some <laughs> of my neighbors they uh, they go down south in the uh, in the winter. Uh, to Florida, and uh, you know, he's had um, Hurricane Ian, and uh, you know, I guess because I talk about electric cars a lot, he brought it up. He goes, you know, a lot of these people down here with electric cars, they don't have anywhere to charge them. And I go, the power's out at your house. He goes, some people don't have power. And I go, but the gas station's working. They're like, yeah. I'm like, so then the gas station has power. He's like, I guess. I'm like, because the gas station wouldn't work without power. Yeah, yeah. So there aren't <laughs> third party chargers out there that you could go to mm. just like going to a gas station you just go to another mm-hmm. charger yeah. and he goes oh i don't know i didn't look into that <laughs> and i was thinking so they're probably not really having a problem yeah. you just don't know anything and you were like hey i got an idea yeah. i'm gonna poke mike because he yeah. says blah 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 yeah yeah there's a lot of people who drive their car on e right now right so <laughs> you know just to get to the gas station for the you know they drive their car to the limit so right, I'm sure the same concept is there with electric vehicles. Yeah, you and I, I feel like the other thing is, is every time I uh, bring it up, everyone wants to talk about like green power and being good for the environment, and, and and then they start telling me how it's not and all this other stuff. Did I say that was my motivation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want a super fast car. Yeah, if it happens to be better for the environment, yeah. cool. I got no problem with that. Yeah, but some of these gas cars. Like to get equivalent speeds, you have to spend hundreds of thousands mm. of dollars, and I'm talking about not spending a hundred thousand mm. dollars and getting yeah. the same performance. Yeah. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice. I don't know. I just um, we were uh, we were going to talk, and I uh, stepped out into the garage for a minute, and I was just staring at my car, and I was thinking, yeah. you know, it'd be a good conversation. I wonder if yeah. Sleem has any of these yeah, uh, yeah. these uh, same. Uh, I guess issues with mm. the public and not understanding new technology, yeah. but yet they all talk like they get what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you know, people don't. They just want to you know push back for the sake of pushing back. So right. But yeah, I appreciate the uh, the information. Uh, you know, like I'm, I'm not one. Of <laughs> I'm those, not trying to sell you on. Yeah, it. no, no. I, I'm not, and I'm not one of those uh, you know conspiracy theorists who want to want to everything bad to say about an electric vehicle you know i um you know ex- aside from my mower I'm, sure I'm, I'm, and I'm, snowblower I'm, yeah yeah i'm 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 good with thinking about it <laughs> all right well um i guess that's all we have for today all right well thank you very much all right i'll talk all right. to you later all right have a good one bye